Bird. Last time we talked about beer that tasted like wet cardboard, but there's a lot of off flavors in beer. In this video, we're going to talk about beer that tastes like rotten eggs, popcorn, and even salty tasting beer. So let's go. Does your beer smell sulfurous like burning matches or rotten eggs? That's due to hydrogen sulfide, which is naturally produced by yeast during fermentation. In particular, lager beers are made with lager yeast, which are known for producing incredible sulfury aromas during fermentation. Ale beers, which are made with ale yeast, produce a lot less sulfur, so the smell usually dissipates during fermentation and isn't noticeable when you drink it. For lager beers, the carbon dioxide gas will carry away most of the hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide is very volatile, so if the beer is left to sit for a longer period of time, the sulfur flavors and taste will fade with time. Some beer drinkers really enjoy this rotten egg smell. For example, in Burton-on-Trent, England, the town's water has a high level of sulfate ions. Beer brewed with this water also has a slightly sulfurous smell and taste, which is famously known as the Burton Snatch. Generally though, sulfury and rotten egg aromas are considered a defect in beers. Have you ever drank a beer and found it left a slickness or oiliness on your tongue? Perhaps the taste reminded you of popcorn or butter. That's from diacetyl. Diacetyl is produced by yeast during beer fermentation. The yeast then reabsorbs it back later on. However, if the yeast that's suspended in the liquid falls out of suspension before it can reabsorb the diacetyl, then you're left with a buttery off flavor. Increased diacetyl that isn't reabsorbed can be due to a number of factors. The yeast used could be weak or mutated. Perhaps the fermentation temperature was too low, or not enough oxygen was added. We can avoid this off flavor by using a high quality yeast that doesn't quickly fall out of suspension before reabsorbing the diacetyl. We can also increase the fermentation temperature and make sure we give the yeast enough oxygen at the start of fermentation. If your beer has a tart taste, like green apples, it's most likely due to acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde is found naturally in ripe fruits, coffee, vegetables, and dairy products. In brewing, when the yeast is converting the sugars into alcohol during fermentation, acetaldehyde is produced. Acetaldehyde will eventually be converted into alcohol during the course of fermentation. However, having a poor fermentation by using poor quality yeast or exposing the beer to too much oxygen can lead to more acetaldehyde production. That's why we want to make sure that we're using healthy yeast during fermentation and managing our oxygen levels. Letting the beer sit around for a few months will also allow the yeast to convert the acetaldehyde into alcohol. If your beer tastes bready or yeast-like, it's probably because the fermenting beer was left sitting on dead yeast for too long. So when we leave the beer in the fermenter to ferment, the yeast is floating around inside the liquid. Over time, the yeast gets old, dies, and falls to the bottom of the container. This dead yeast builds up at the bottom of the container. These yeast cells will eventually burst or self-destruct. We call this yeast autolysis. The contents of the yeast cell will leak out with bad, undesirable off flavor. To prevent this yeasty off flavor, brewers will remove the bottom yeast sediment, which we call racking off the yeast. Brewers may also transfer the beer to another vessel in an effort to separate out the liquid from the yeast sediment at the bottom. Have you ever had a salty beer? You may be surprised to learn that it's common practice to add salts to the water when brewing beer. Common brewing salts are gypsum, 
which is calcium sulfate, salt, which is sodium chloride, powdered chalk, which is calcium carbonate, and Epsom salts, which are magnesium sulfate. Adding brewing salts to the water does a number of things, such as making the water a little acidic to improve hop extraction and improve the conversion of malt starches into sugars. Knowing which brewing salts to add and the quantity needed depends on the brewery's water profile. Some breweries will have their water analyzed to find out the mineral content. Depending on whether their water is soft or hard, they can then calculate the amount of brewing salts they should add to the water. If brewers aren't careful and don't understand their brewery's water profile, they can add too much brewing salt. And bam, you've got yourself a salty beer. I hope you enjoyed learning some more about the off flavors in beer. If you'd like to support the channel, please give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. And hit that subscribe button for more brewing, distilling, and nerdy drinks videos. This is Brewbird, sending goodbye Joey. I'll see you next time.